Amy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. For those of you that are new to our page, we do. My family and I live 100% off grid in northern Idaho for the last decade, and we ed educate on our lifestyle and uh, preparedness and faith. Oop, my alarm is going off. And now it's done. Our house is a zoo today, so you're going to have to bear with me. Um, it's been a crazy couple days, and I'm sure it is crazy for all of you, too. And that's why I thought we would talk about preparedness and a plan, and also the importance of faith and not fear. Um, as part of um, our education, we are very faith-led, and we share that in all that we do. And... In situations like this, it's extremely important that we keep God in first place, follow his lead, and have great faith and trust in him. The last couple, <laughs> I don't know who's on with me yet, but that was the mountain man. <laughs> uh, and he's here. That That is, wow, thank you. I am here. He is here. Thank you. Goodness, here I am. Here. It has been a month. Good morning, Miss Angela. The man has been gone since Valentine's Day. Yes, he left on Valentine's Day, the day I saw the Eagles, the day that when I told you I would share more and it would all make sense. He flew out Valentine's morning and has been gone in South Carolina and Georgia for two weeks and Pennsylvania traveling with work and just returned yesterday so i am a very happy woman <laughs> very happy and sunday i did a trip to fetch the mountain boy at school which initially um we chose to pull him out and he took a seven day leave he had seven days of leave time that he could utilize and yesterday we got the phone call that they are shutting down and would be accepting him back on April 14th. When he left, he actually had to sign a resignation um, stating that um, if he didn't return, he was resigning. That was actually a safeguard because otherwise they would consider him AWOL and in which case he would not be welcomed back. So um, I was very, we were very, very excited yesterday when we got the phone call that he was, um, able to return and um, that they were officially shutting down, which I was grateful for because it's not, you know, when you're going through a situation like this, it's really nice when you can be with your family and your loved ones, um, or at least um, in a place that you're comfortable. And um, he was definitely ready for me to come fetch him. So uh, God is good. And uh, I want to remind you guys to remember that today because um, I want to talk, I want to me what is going on in your neck of the woods good morning miss kelly good morning miss courtney hopefully you guys can hear me there's a lot going on here today um looks like my house looks like a bomb went off with everybody moving in and uh, we're all working on different chores to get things in place and accomplished and um all taking part so good morning chad Everybody say happy birthday to Chad. Chad had a birthday yesterday. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Miss Shelley is on an island. Uh, I'd like all of you to chime in and share what's going on in your neck of the woods. Good morning, Anita. Angela says all of our schools have been closed until April 28th by our governor. I think it's awesome. You know, if, if there's concern, I feel that there are things we are not being told. And um, it's probably rightfully so because right now there's already, you know, panic setting in. Um, I'll talk further about our experiences. Um, but I think that if there's more to this than they're sharing and letting on, that it's important that we do put an end to it. It is definitely mutating. And, you know, the concern of it spreading um, is obviously a concern. So if we can put an end to it, I have to say I was really impressed to see the Disney and the uh, Major League Baseball shut down and also good to see a lot of local businesses being willing to um, take precautionary 
numbers and are looking at the precautions versus the revenue. Um, I think we all need to look at this big picture as, um, you know, we're all going to be in the same boat. And if they start shutting down localities and businesses, um, there's going to have to be grace shown. You know, if they are closing schools and parents can't work, you know, for that time frame, um, they've already put things in place in San Francisco. They put a lockdown in San Francisco. Everybody is housebound. That's six million people. And um, in doing so, they also uh, put a stop to evictions for both renters and homeowners uh, so that the banks have to show leniency. So I, no matter what goes on, we have to remember not to live out of a place of fear and worry. And that's what I want to talk about greatly today because it's very easy in a situation like this for everybody to start panicking and worrying. And it's not a good place to work out of. It's not a good place to be. Uh, good morning, Linda. Awesome. I'm so glad. Welcome. I'm glad you're here and live and live with us. Uh, Angela says economy is going to take a huge hit. It is, but you know what? We just got to keep looking forward and faithfully moving forward. Our county is shut down, Kelly is saying. All bars, eating places, libraries, gyms, etc. The state shut down schools. And Linda says our schools are already closed in Vermont. Awesome. You know, if, if they're going to do this and they're going to try to put an end to this, the only way that's going to happen is for everybody to go under a lockdown. And if you look at things in Wuhan, it was one 52-day period to see the reverse. First you had all the sickness and the deaths, then you started seeing the decline. And by doing this, it'll give us the ability to have the decline. And I, I believe that there's going to be a, a a lot of good to come from this. Um, Shelly says they have closed schools, libraries, gyms. I still have to go to work as work in, in home care. Yeah, and and Shelly's on island. What is your population, Shelly? Um, just out of curiosity. So being on an island, that does cause concern. It causes a concern for all of us because if things shut down, you know, we may not be able to restock um, our stores and and so forth Exactly Chad rest in the Prince of Peace if you don't know him turn to Jesus Christ exactly You know we have led you guys for four years um, Very strongly in being very vocal with our faith faith We've been leading you for ten years in preparedness and in our faith But over the last four years we've really become very vocal in our faith because God has blessed us led us cared for us, comforted us in such crazy situations. Let me just give you an example. I left to get Austin on Friday, or Sunday, and when I left to go get him, um, I had, for the last two weeks, I've had truck troubles. I had a few. Um, two weeks ago, last week, I had a radiator hose go. Um, I also had um, two other issues with the truck. I got on the road, she was running nice, and I got about two hours away on a five hour trip, and I started to have problems with the truck. And it's really weird, every time I've gone up there to get him, I have problems with the truck at the same place. It's really bizarre, but anyway. Um, this time the service engine light went on, and right away I'm pondering, you know, so, okay, what are my scenarios? If I get there and it doesn't run anymore, what are, what are we gonna do at that point? Um, and then on the return, um, the way I did was the area. Um, there was some cell service, but it was very sketchy. So that's obviously not the way I want to take home. If it does break down, I would be absolutely in the middle of nowhere. However, I had plenty of things in my truck to survive, you know, for multiple days. But that's not the issue. Um, being secluded, if something happens, I am leaving myself a little more vulnerable. However, I was also prepared in that aspect of things. But I took a more populated route home. We didn't have any problems on the way home, but what I did...
but take those precautions. Um, you know, there are still people in need and hats off to those of you that are out there in the forefront running things, things going. Um, Shelly says probably about a million, not a small island, but everything comes here by ferry. Unless exactly, exactly. Um, Tammy says her husband is now working from home. And, and I will say, I have with my men being here. They have been gone for a month. And um, I wasn't sharing that because I was would have put my safety at risk. I am back here in the middle of nowhere by myself and absolutely enjoy my solitude. And I love the chores that I have to do. So I was enjoying my time here, of course, men. But in a situation like this and um, the whole purpose behind us moving here and living where we do was to pre be prepared for situations like this. So it does give me great comfort to have my men here. And for those of you that do not have your family all with you, you know, my prayers and my thoughts with you because I know that that feeling, um, us moms, our hearts uh, are constantly connected to our families um, and our children. So it did give me great peace to be able to get uh, my men here. But we can't work out of places of fear and worry. Even before they were here, I was not allowing myself to work out of a place of worry. You know, because if, if God kept Glenn on the East coast, there was reason behind it. You know, so if things didn't work out the way I wanted them to, behind it. He needed to be a light there. He was more needed there than he was needed here. Same with the mountain boy. So that's that's my mindset. That's where I work out of. I work out of a place of trust and I work out of a place of faith and I keep him in the forefront. Do I get anxious sometimes? Yes. What do I do when I get anxious? I go to him. I go to his word. I delve into his word. I delve into uh, communion and fellowship with him um, to get his direction you guys to learn how to do you can't work out of a place of fear and worry we've got to work out of where we are now um chad says also the local um i think that was supposed to, uh, the local reduced is damaged and they are moving people to a different place waiting instruction please pray for that we'll definitely we'll definitely do that so the local mission is is damaged um and we need to pray for each other. We need to um, support each other. One of the nice things that I'm seeing mostly where we are is, you know, people being decent. You're not, I mean, there's there's a, definitely a run on toilet paper. It is really concerning. The mountain man and I went to the store yesterday on our way home. And it's alarming to see what's left on the shelves and what's gone. I'd like to think that it's because our area is very preparedness minded. However, we weren't in our area. We were two hours from here in the bigger city. And um, it's concerning. Toilet paper is going to last you only so long. If you're not eating, you're not going to need your toilet paper. So uh, people stocking up on that because it's a comfort and a convenience and, and that. But we also need to uh, think of other concerns and... You know, we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago about stocking up and having, you know, at least, you know, my minimum is at least a year's worth of food, bare minimum. But for those of you that shop on a regular basis right now, I would say to have at least three or four months worth of food if if that's how you you operate so that you have plenty of food and to have things that are non-perishables is important make sure you have a non electric can opener my man um beautiful mug <laughs> oh. she was missing me <laughs> i wasn't missing her oh yeah you're funny okay maybe i was <laughs> a month a month is a bit long but yeah the most we've ever been apart in 11 years has been two weeks so it's actually getting closer to like five weeks. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But yeah, it was kind of interesting you talking about, you know, what she's talking about and stuff. Um, it was kind of interesting uh, on.
on the plane ride home, uh, normally a plane that fly in is jam packed with people. There was row after row that only had a person in it. It was it was pretty. It was quite something. Yeah. Got to stretch out a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't our our uh, m first means of transportation, but a rental car from Pennsylvania to Idaho would have been about twelve hundred dollars, and that didn't include the fuel. And with him saying that, you know, it was pretty interesting to see the price of plane Jed. tickets. It was. Oh, <laughs> it was interesting to see the price of plane tickets right now too. They are plummeting. Um, Certain airlines are still taking advantage of uh, people wanting, but for the most part, the plane tickets were dropping in price. Yeah, I mean, big, big time. I went to church with my mom and dad, and uh, the one morning, uh, Sunday morning, and the pastor there was saying that you could buy a ticket. To Florida from Pennsylvania for thirty three dollars. No way. Yeah. No way. Because yep. the ticket I found for him was a hundred, hundred and ninety one was the first ticket I found for him. But we we revamp things um, because of Washington and the potential of Washington shutting down and the airport shutting down in Washington. He flew into Idaho, so it was definitely more pricey. And again, that's where some of the airlines are taking advantage of people trying to get home, where others are just trying to make continue to make money um but and and with him flying you know in our mind that's just nothing but a, a big petri dish at the point so taking precautions was important and you know we came back home and um showered and and threw all of our clothes in the wash and you know tried to tried to head things off you know so being smart using common sense at this point is extremely important um, wearing gloves to the grocery store. I know it sounds crazy, but you know, you really do, you need to take the precautions, um, especially if you're trying to keep your family healthy and safe. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Um, I didn't see all the, all of the stuff like that was disappearing out of the grocery stores and that, and she sent me some pictures cause I was in, you know the work I was doing. Oh man, um, grueling. I wasn't going to stores and stuff. It was eat out stuff, and, and so I didn't get it to the grocery stores. But man, it, from what people were saying, it was unreal. Because I was in some of the little bigger cities, um, like Atlanta. the size of Atlanta. Well, it was Atlanta. It's just outside of Atlanta. Yeah. Um, so there was, from what people, pretty crazy stuff going on at the grocery stores and that. And I heard a guy talking on the um, airplane. He was talking to another man, and uh, he was saying about how some of these places. He's been in several states here in the last, I guess, week or so, and he says it's all over. It's not just, mm -hmm. you know in one spot it's it's like all over so Everywhere. it's kind of crazy yeah but and it's you know i see a lot of people joking about it or upset that we're going to this extreme for just a cold a, a normal winter cold and maybe it is but again like i said i feel like they know more than we do they're certainly not going to share something that's going to put the whole nation into an absolute panic so you know i've never witnessed this i'm I'm 50, I've never witnessed anything like this before, and um, rather than joke about it, you know, I think that there is a point now here where we need to take this seriously and and think beyond a month. You know, many people just have a month's worth of food. What are you going to do if the quarantines or the shutdowns last three or four months? So, I'm not saying panic, but what I'm saying is be smart and be prepared. And, and don't just stock up on toilet paper and paper goods, because those aren't going to do you any good. Can't it, eat toilet paper. All right. I mean, you can. I can't promise the outcome would be really good. <laughs> not a whole lot of protein there. No. 
Miss, we've got a comments coming in here. Good morning, Terry. Uh, for any elderly who didn't get to shop before panic, we can also use clothes and wash use clothes and wash daily. Worst case. Awesome. That's so awesome. Reaching out to the community like that. Good morning, Cami. I'm not sure if I said that already. Um, gargle with warm salt water helps. You know, that's really important to um, understand some of the things about this virus. It doesn't like the cold or it, it doesn't like the Yep, oh. exactly. We'll catch you later. You're gonna say hi instead of just breezing around. You're like you're like the backdrop. Hi. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Man of many words. Um, Linda says the video is way ahead of the audio. Is it just me? Yes. Says broadcast interrupted. Yeah, I just had a low connection. I don't know what's going on. Our internet's been a little wonky, so uh, sorry about that. The replay will be back out there. If you're having problems now, you can always watch the replay and, and join in. And I will also be uh, streaming this to YouTube, hopefully later today or tomorrow. So, um, but yes, like he said, just be, be diligent, pay attention to your surroundings, pray for one another, um, be aware of your surroundings and, and do take this seriously. You know, a lot of, I've run into a lot of people, you know, really finding humor in this and joking about it. And, and it, you know, it, it might be an oddity. It, it might be for nothing, but I think that there's more to it. And, and as far as regardless what it is and what's going to happen and what's going on, being diligent and, and taking care of yourself and being prepared and having a plan in place is really, really important. You know, we are blessed, honestly, that it is this time of year that things are occurring for a lot of reasons. Um, one, this thing um, is not minding the cold, but we are heading into warmer weather. So that has great bearing on things. The other thing is we are, are heading into spring. Um, that gives us the opportunity to start growing our own food, foraging from the wild. So there's a lot of good in the timing of this. Um, but it's really extremely important that you do have enough food and, and things to hold you over. Um, it really causes you to start thinking out of the box. I hope that you're thinking, um, you know, ways of being clean, you know, that's a problem. Um, none of the soaps and things were being cleaned out of the store need to keep yourself clean you still need soap I have stuff here so I can make my soap and um, continue to keep things going if I do run out of what I have it's just you got to think of the whole gamut not just the aspect of eating or going to the bathroom and stocking up on water having extra water if you are not in in a place where you are going to be able to access water if for some reason something happened to power and so forth so you've got to think of all aspects of everything and and we are still able to get in and out we are still able to go to the stores a lot of places are completely cleaning out like on Drive Life is got very little left on their shelves. Um, Amazon, everything that I have in my cart is not staying in my cart. It's depleted. Uh, there's a chance that places like that will close. You know, they are causing all the localities to close. Well, these people that are behind the scenes of these websites also deserve to be with their families and need to uh, heed the warnings of their localities. So, you know, you have to realize that these things are gonna start closing online too. So don't waste opportunities. If you have opportunities now to fill your pantry up for another month or two, um, don't, don't hesitate on that. And at this point, stocking up on the beans and the rice and things that you can, can cook. Also, Consider how you're going to cook if, you know, you run out of propane or you run out of uh, gas or different aspects of things. For us, the propane is what we use to cook on. He's already preparing uh, a, an oven and a way to cook so that we can conserve 
on our propane because if we are getting shut down, we won't be able to get propane refilled. Same with gas for our generator and different things like that. So thinking of all of those things, having a plan in place, having um, the tools you need to function and operate. And, and again, don't do this all out of fear. Do it out of just a level of preparedness and being diligent as to fully what this could look like as we, as we live it out. Um, Kelly says, you are in and out, so I will watch later. Have fruit trees to finish trimming before it snows. All right, love you, girl. Sorry, guys, that it's in and out today. Um, I don't know. We've been having some weird problems with our internet. But God is good. God is constantly present. God is working miracles in our lives. You know, we need to just pray for his will, pray for his support, focus on him, and... Um, today because I keep getting bad connection. That's really weird. So I am sorry, but we're going to keep going here. And and when I say that about working of naivety, you know, like I said, I see many people joke, you know, laughing this off and it, it may be nothing, but the thing is what's happening despite this, these germs and this virus is the thing that we need to be focusing on and being Due diligent in our efforts. Extra fuel on ham, lamp oil, case of power, uh, in case of a our food. But we don't know how long this is going to go and what the after effects of this are going to look like. So even in our position, we are already looking at things in a conservative method. Um, now that we're all here, I don't have to use my generator at night to power the house. The reason I was having to do that is, as I told you a couple weeks ago, our solar batteries are, are not holding a charge anymore. And... Um, they still work when the sun is shining, but as soon as the sun is off the panels, probably within like a half an hour to an hour, our alarm is going off and that we need to run the generator. Well, with us all being present and here and I don't have to communicate with everybody, we are choosing not to run that. So um, to enable us to continue to keep as much fuel on hand as we can to limit our resources and that way moving ahead, we will be set and and be better off. And it's not a bad idea to do that. You know, when you get in situations like this, it's really easy to fear and to eat out of boredom. Keep yourselves busy. There's a lot you can do right now. I am planning my garden. I am working on a quilt for my bed because the one I have needs replaced. So there are things we can do to keep ourselves busy. We are planning ahead. We are getting more firewood. That way, if we need to run the um, outdoor oven, I can. we have plenty of wood on hand. We are surrounded by timber, but it's also the effort of having it here, um, chopping it, stacking it, being prepared. Also, keeping ourselves fit and busy um, is a great way to keep your mind at ease, too, if you are someone that is easily heading to the point of fear and worry. Um, I want to read some things to you today. While I still have you guys on here, uh, I don't, I'm sorry for breaking up on me, um, but these were really, really good devotionals. Um, this was two days ago, and it's the need for rest and renewal. Those who wait on the Lord shall have strength, Isaiah 40, 31. When you're physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained, you become vulnerable. When Samson grew tired, he laid down in Delilah's lap. Jesus called for a 100% commitment, but he also knew the importance of staying in balance, of work and rest, of giving out and taking in. And then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. A good general, good 
general will never commit all at the same time. He keeps a reserve force to relieve the exhausted ones when they stagger back from the front lines. Yes, you may have the greatest assignment in the world and be succeeding in it, but unless you keep a reserve, you're opening yourself up to potential danger. That's why setting aside time each day to be alone with God in prayer and by reading is so important. If Satan can't defeat you outright, he will settle for an exhausted ineffective version of the person God wants you to be. If you're a type A high energy person, you're at risk. What's Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount We are still downloading some videos onto our machines and books onto our machines so that when we don't have power, we can enjoy something like that. Uh, we have a swing outside chimney with, that I love to sit in front of and enjoy a fire. Some of the things we of our favorite foods so that you have those comfort and to enjoy things you enjoy most in life. A place where we enjoy our life. And you, we got to remember that even though there might be things that we need to do and to plan for, we also need to take time in him and take time in uh, our efforts to enjoy ourselves and stay in. Within, victory is assured without. It's a matter of replenishing your strength by drawing on God's strength, refocusing your faith towards victory, and calling the remembrance God's promises. And that's Psalm 77 6. When you feel overwhelmed by trouble in your marriage, your business, your health, your job, finances, stand on these two Bible promises. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk in pain. These are two separate, verse, two separate devotionals and they were from this week. So I think the words are very powerful. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure and thought we would never live through it. Act we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God. And He did rescue us. We have placed our confidence in Him, and He will continue to rescue us. That's 2 Corinthians 1 8 through 10. Instead of trying to escape the situation, seek God, and He will give you strength and a strategy to come out of it stronger. Truly, guys, you know, as I was traveling the other day to get the mountain boy, and I was having truck problems, and they were pretty hefty truck problems um could have could have very easily debilitated me alongside the road but when i realized that i was pondering all different scenarios and different things and it is good to plan and that is the way my mind works but it's also my goal was to get to him and then i would figure things out from there but i also trusted and believed that god would get me where i needed to be and where i landed today was where I was meant to be. And, you know, I took great comfort and peace in that. And the rest of my ride was very peaceful and comforting. And, you know, this situation should be no different. We need to trust that he's going to carry us through. Um, we need to trust that what we have is enough. You know, if you are in a position where you are unable to get any more, you need to trust that he's going to carry you through. Think about the loaves of bread and the fish. He can do those things. He's done those things in our lives. And, you know, I feel right now that we are in a place probably different than many of you. Um, there are some of you that have walked out very similar things as we have these last four years. But we've been in a place of nothing much last four years. We have been in a place where we couldn't do anything more than what we, we couldn't, we couldn't expand on anything more than what we had. Um, we couldn't change circumstances we were where we were without and you know what 
this is going to be no different than what we've walked out these last four years. And these last four years, what got us through is our, our faith, our trust, and our obedience. And, and God has carried us. God has provided. God has worked endless miracles on our behalf and is still continuing to do so. We have inspection here on the house. So despite everything um, happening in our country right now, our sale is still moving forward. So God is good and God will carry us. God will take care of us, but we need to seek him. We need to um, focus on him. We need to not work out of a place of fear and worry and being scared. We need to have a plan in place. And um, if that means that you do have low food, ration your foods and, and keep praying. God will answer prayers. God is very visible in our lives, and I hope and pray that you guys have seen that through all that we have walked out. And the other thing is through this, like Kelly said, you know, she's reached out to the senior center to see if there was anything they could do to help. Many of the stores have set specific hours for the elderly to shop. Um, if you have elderly neighbors, or people that are in need, you know, reach out and see how you can help them. But being a love and a light in this time is important too. You know, we can make a huge difference. And that is one of the things that I'm seeing a lot in our community is that there's not people fighting over things and, and, and fussing that we're still being the loving people that we are meant to be. So, Situation turn us into heathens, you know. Be there for others. We are called to love, and like Chad said, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's very simple to have one. You just need to ask him to um, be willing to ask for forgiveness for the wrong, and you need to just commune with him, just like I'm talking to you guys right now. This is how I talk to God throughout my day, both in internally and externally. And seeking him when we are scared and worried and feeling negative emotions is a key thing. Um, it's important to seek him at all times, not just through the good and not just through the bad, but all the time through this, you guys still need to seek the blessing and the the that you are grateful for around you. You know, it might be a concerning time, but there's much good going on and we will see it through this. And like I said to someone else earlier today, you know, um, some, someone had mentioned to me that they're really worried about their business shutting down. And the thing is, it's going to not just happen to some of us, it's going to happen to all of us. We're all going to be in this situation and care and love and community fellowship and community, you know, we will all pull through this and, and keep moving on. You know, things may be different on the other side of this, better. Maybe there'll be a huge realization and maybe there'll also be a big um, situation where people feel the need to pull God into their lives and um, to all be prepared. So I know you guys are having a hard time going in and out and I'm told it's spinning and things aren't keeping up real well. So I hope you gain something from this. We are praying for all and we just pray that you all stay healthy and uh, just take care of your stuff. And I've hoped that you've heeded some of my previous videos on some of the things to stock up on and that you've been able to um, get a little bit more in your and that you are not working out of a place of fear and worry. It's not a good place to be regardless what's going on. So I'm going to say a prayer for us and uh, get back to your day. I'm sorry this again has been such a, a struggle. But uh, we have a prayer list down below. If you all need prayer beyond what we have, please do share that. Um, but we, we will be praying for you all. And I know many of you are praying for everyone as well. Uh, 
keeping close knit, keeping tight in our community is really important here. We have an amazing group of prayer warriors and I know that we see the other side of this in a very bright way. So I'm going to say our prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you that you have blessed me with my men being home. Thank you that we've uh, had travel mercies and, and that you've kept your hand on us. I ask that you do the same for all those out there that are still traveling to get to their families and um, just be with everyone right now. Help them to find peace and joy through this unfortunate circumstance. Help them to find comfort in you. Help them to continue to turn to you when they feel weak and, and weary. And just help them to pay attention to their thought process that when they are in a place of fear and worry that they are turning to you. You are the answer. You have always been the answer. And you just provide them with great comfort. And just be with those that are, are struggling right now. Help them and guide them. And just... Uh, Allow us to get what we need and to uh, provide for our families and to also uh, just be able to help others through this process to be a light and love and just keep us all healthy, keep us all safe and uh, more than anything, keep our eyes on you and keep looking towards you. Thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. Be with our nation and other countries and people struggling. Just uh, guide us, direct us, and keep us in communion. And Lord, we just love you and thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. And ask all this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Again, guys, sorry that this has been all over the place and breaking up. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to, those of you that are watching the replay, be able to see this a little clearer. But we'll continue to jump on here. There's a lot of people that are in need of prayer down below. And we are praying for all of you. We love you all. And we thank you for being a part of our community. And your strong prayers, your strong prayers have carried us for the last years. And uh, we are celebrating uh, what God with our home right now as well. There'll be more on that too. There's still more going on in our lives that we aren't able to share in detail, but as I am able to, you will see how God is working miracle after miracle. So guys, I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and don't live out of fear. Just focus on God, focus on each other, 